We've seen exponential advancements in the world of artificial intelligence, and this was brought to the forefront of public consciousness thanks to tools like ChatGPT. Once people saw all of the incredible things that ChatGPT could do, one question began dominating the conversation about this new technological milestone. Is AI gonna take our jobs? What answer you get to that question really depends on who you ask. A lot of supposed futurists and technology experts believe that AI is going to make many jobs obsolete, while economists are more likely to say that human jobs aren't in any danger of disappearing. So who's correct? Well, predicting the future is a difficult task, but it becomes a lot easier when we acknowledge that the same fear has persisted for over 200 years. Despite AI being cutting-edge technology, the fear of human obsolescence is absolutely nothing new. In modern times, this can be traced all the way back to the Luddites of the late 17th century and early 1800s. The Luddites got their name from the story of Ned Ludd, a fictional apprentice who is claimed to have destroyed a pair of mechanical knitting machines. While this person may not have ever existed, the violence against machines was very real. The textile industry was being modernized and automated, and machines like steam-powered looms and cotton gins threatened to take away valuable jobs in many Manufacturing. Not only did these machines save time and money, they increased productivity to the point that fewer people were needed per manufacturing plant to produce the same amount of goods. In England, where the movement was most prominent, Luddites responded to this shift in production by sneaking into factories to destroy the machines that were going to take their jobs. In turn, factory owners responded by murdering Luddites until the government finally stepped in to suppress the protesters. The machines had the full backing of the law and the military, and the Luddites were sh out of luck. Not as out of luck as they originally thought, but we'll get back to that in just a moment. First, let's fast forward to the end of the 1800s and the invention of the tractor and other farm equipment. Once again, machines were threatening to make humans obsolete. At the time, about 75% of Americans that were employed had a job in agriculture. That number quickly began to plummet as machines made much of that human labor obsolete. Thanks to machines being able to do much of the work better and faster than people, now only about 1.5% of Americans have jobs in agriculture. So automation really did make jobs obsolete, and people were correct to be afraid of them, right? Well, it may have made many of those particular jobs obsolete, but there were still plenty of other jobs. People were just going to need to be better prepared to handle those jobs. While there were many other factors involved, including a huge push to end child labor, the obsolescence of a lot of these unskilled manual labor jobs helped drive forward the high school movement. A primary school education simply wasn't going to cut it in the modern world of the 1910s, so kids were going to be required to stay in school all the way until they were 16 to 18 years old. With agriculture already on the decline and moving assembly lines on the rise, fears about automation continued to grow as it seemed that more jobs would eventually be replaced by the machines. The Great Depression hit, and these fears got worse. The depression wasn't caused by automation, but its existence led to concerns that jobs would become harder to come by. Luckily, there was a world war to get the economy moving again, but concerns about automation never went away. For example, when the ATM was invented in the late 1960s, so-called experts predicted that 75% of bank tellers would become unemployed. After all, these machines could do the job of a bank teller faster than a human could, and they would allow people to do their banking 24 hours a day. Not only is that not what happened, but it is famously the complete opposite of what happened. The number of bank tellers in the United States has increased dramatically since the invention of the ATM, rendering some of their duties obsolete. In fact, the job market for tellers has grown at a faster rate than the industry average. So how can this be? Between ATMs, direct deposit, and all the other modern banking convenience, it seems like tellers should be a thing of the past. And yet now, there's a nationwide shortage of them. Just like the Luddites found out over a century earlier, as production costs go down, demand increases. Thanks to machines, textile factories needed fewer employees. This drove down the cost to run a factory and, in turn, the cost of goods produced. With the price of goods lowered, people were able to buy more, and this, in turn, made it profitable for companies to open more textile factories. Similarly, ATMs reduced the number of tellers at each bank by about a third, but that meant opening a new branch of a bank was going to be a lot cheaper. The number of branches increased, causing the total number of tellers to increase as well. Now, thus far, the recurring pattern has been that automation doesn't doesn't completely eliminate jobs, it simply changes them. The role of a bank teller is much less transactional than it once was, as simple tasks like deposits and withdrawals can be handled by machines. Instead, it has transitioned into more of a service role to help people with the other services provided by the bank. In effect, machines have optimized some of the most boring and tedious parts of jobs, allowing people to work alongside those machines in a similar but transformed role. 
Despite an immense societal fear of automation replacing everyone's jobs re-emerging every couple of decades for the past two centuries, it has yet to happen. Instead, the percentage of working age people that are employed started to increase after these fears first presented themselves. They have since plateaued, remaining largely consistent. Ever since women entered the workforce en masse, between 75 to 80 percent of working age Americans have been part of the labor force. There have been a few dips in that number, but those are in times of recession rather than being the result of automation. Now, many of the people claiming that automation is going to make many of our jobs obsolete are not oblivious to the facts that we've discussed so far. They also aren't entirely wrong either. While many jobs have been transformed thanks to automation, some have been eliminated entirely. For example, you probably haven't seen an elevator operator in your lifetime. That said, new jobs have been created as a result of the technological advances as well. Enough new jobs that employment rates are able to remain fairly consistent. However, there are experts that believe that this time is going to be different. Then again, there were also experts that predicted automation would result in a 15-hour work week and an average retirement age of 38. Sadly not. Like we said at the beginning, predicting the future can be really hard. But given all the history of the job market surviving automation in the past, why are there still so many people that believe artificial intelligence will finally be the end of human labor? And the answer to that is simply because people find AI a bit scary. Until now, automation was seen as only threatening the most menial forms of labor, but now there's the perception that computers are going to replace people's cushy office jobs. After all, ChatGPT seems so human and like it could do literally anything, but that's not the case. While a general AI could present a larger existential threat to humanity that is still a long way away. Everything we have created thus far is narrow AI, which is only good at a single specialized task. In the case of ChatGPT, its speciality seems to be making people think that it's far more capable than it really is. The way ChatGPT works is by essentially being fed everything ever written up until January of 2022, or since this is written updated to 2023. When given a prompt, it uses that massive database of text to find similar questions and the answers that commonly followed. These answers get rearranged and regurgitated to create a seemingly new answer that is really just an amalgam of previously written text. AI-generated art works in the same way, which is why AI images sometimes contain watermarks or artist signatures from the original images that were used to create it. Without any context, it seems like these forms of AI can do and create anything. But all they're doing is mixing together different works already created by humans in the hopes that they create a suitable answer to a given prompt. They don't possess creativities on their own, and any attempts to make a creative piece will always be extremely derivative by design. Now, that's not to say that these new AI tools and ones that will be deployed in the near future are completely useless. There are certain tasks within an office setting that can absolutely be delegated to an AI, and that amount is only going to increase. But just like how this didn't eliminate bank tellers from the world, it's unlikely to eliminate these jobs either. The jobs will merely change to reflect the new needs of the position now that the other tasks have been streamlined. Realistically, the people most likely to be made obsolete by automation are the ones that refuse to work alongside it. The invention of the cement mixer didn't make construction workers obsolete, but a company that refused to embrace the technology quickly became obsolete, as all they could offer customers were higher prices and longer construction times. Utilizing this technology should only improve the productivity of existing workers, again creating the cycle of lower overhead and higher demand that would allow new companies and branches to be built to handle many temporarily displaced workers. While we have dismissed AI's ability to create anything new, that doesn't mean it's useless to people with jobs demanding creativity either. ChatGPT cannot write a screenplay or even a piece of ad copy that would be worth presenting to a client, but it can still be a useful tool for brainstorming ideas. And at the end of the day, that's all AI is right now. It's a tool. It's something that can be used to streamline certain tedious and undesirable tasks, as well as providing a jumping off point for bigger ideas. But it is far from human, so there is a limit to how many jobs it could fully replace. If your job happens to be one of the ones that is replaced entirely, well, America is facing a nationwide shortage of bank tellers, teachers, and pharmacists, just to name a few, so there are still lots of jobs available. There's currently no reason to believe that we're in danger of automation resulting in wide-scale unemployment. But just for a second, let's entertain the idea that every conclusion that we've drawn from the data thus far is incorrect and AI really is going to make nearly all jobs obsolete. What would happen then? Well, to start, it would become apparent very quickly how terrible an idea it was to fire everybody. 
Let's take journalism as an example. If you had a language model like ChatGPT, but ideally more advanced, it could produce high-quality news reports that would be indistinguishable from human-written pieces. You might think we could theoretically replace the entire Associated Press with AI that would create up-to-date coverage of global news events. It certainly seems possible, but there is a huge problem. Even if the AI was connected to the internet, rather than having access to what happened until January 2022 or now 2023, it still doesn't know anything. The answers generated by these language models are just a recombination of existing texts that humans have previously written. If all the journalists in the world were replaced by AI, there would be nobody to write the initial news report. That means when AI was prompted to write a news story about a current event, there would be nothing for it to actually draw upon and copy unless there was a fictitious account of something similar happening. This results in what are referred to as hallucinations. Sometimes ChatGPT will say stuff that is completely factually inaccurate. It will even cite books that weren't written, references legal precedents from cases that never took place, and provide links to websites that just don't exist. If you push these AIs for an answer, they will give you one, because that's what they are designed to do. They don't know the difference between fact and fiction. They just know what words are commonly placed in what order in order to respond to a specific prompt. That's just one example of why you shouldn't expect automation to wipe out entire industries. And there are plenty more. But we're supposed to be entertaining the idea that it can, so let's just say 50% of all jobs were eliminated overnight thanks to automation. In the event that really happens, it would just make more jobs. Jobs. This great characteristic of humans, which is that we're all insatiable black holes of greed. Thus far, the cycle has gone like this. Automation lowers prices and increases productivity. With prices lowered, people often buy more of that thing, causing companies to expand and hire more workers so they can produce and sell to more people. Alternatively, people spend their money on other things instead, creating new business opportunities. No matter how many jobs wind up being made obsolete, there will always be new job opportunities because people are always going to want more. But this does raise an interesting question. If most of today's jobs were made obsolete by automation, you may be wondering what the new jobs we'd create would look like. Obviously, a lot of the new jobs would involve building and maintaining the machines that are doing the other work for us. As for what other new jobs will be created, well, we have no idea. How could we? When American agriculture became more automated and parents sent their children off to school instead of having them stay at home and work the farm, none of them could have imagined that their daughters grew up to become computers. And most of those women probably never realized that their grandchildren would grow up completely unaware that computer was once an occupation rather than a machine. They certainly couldn't have imagined that their grandchildren could become software engineers. It's impossible to say what new products and industries will be created, but all historical evidence strongly suggests that no matter how many jobs are able to become partially or fully automated, there will always be new jobs to do. And the current state of AI doesn't pose nearly as large a threat as many would have you believe. Remember, all ChatGPT does is shuffle together a few things that other people have already written to answer your prompts, literally copying in human speech. And since so many people love to talk out of their asses, the AI is just using their text to make itself sound more qualified than it really is.